Hello folks, this is a video about uh, making an adapter for the uh, Yi 4K Plus uh, which is a camera which does 4K at up to 60p uh, so it's uh, almost unique I think in that for a, an action type camera and uh, you'll notice mine if you're familiar with the, this Yi 4K Plus camera it uh, has a, uh, a modified this with something called a backbone so this is uh, it's not quite relevant to this discussion but just in case you think it looks a little bit different this is definitely a Yi 4K and it's had a, a backbone uh, modification but I will warn you if you decide to do that modification yourself uh, just it's it's quite painful so <laughs> if you've done one if you've done one then you might be able to do others uh, later on uh, a bit easier but uh, it is a uh, quite a, um, a palaver to get it to work anyway let's move on to what this is about so one of the things about the e4k is that um, it has uh, a single connector for pretty much everything which is a USB-C connector uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, this is the a USB-C connector rather than uh, the old sort of types of um, USB uh, mini or micro B type connectors. So that in itself you think, well that's not a big deal. Well the problem is is that the, this is a, a, covers a multitude of sins for connectivity, so it includes power, data, and uh, microphone connection and the video out. So um, thankfully uh, ye do provide some adapters so um, for example uh, here's one here this is um, a microphone uh, adapter uh, which you can just plug in so um, nothing much to it to be honest with you it's just a USB-C connector three and a half millimeter uh, socket which you can put your uh, microphone into and it just plugs into the USB-C so that's great but the problem comes is when you want to uh, also power the device because if you're doing a reasonably long shot or uh, whatever that's that can um, uh, means that your batteries are, are going to be uh, pretty much dead before you know it. So you might think, well, is there a way that we can add some uh, power into this? And the other thing is, is sometimes it's nice to be able to actually be able to see the video that's coming out of it. Um, so you can do things like get the, make sure the focus is right, and that's particularly relevant when you're using this um, mod, this backbone mod, which allows you to put various different C mount lenses on like these which have focus uh, rings on them as and so in order to be able to do that you want to be able to have a, a reasonably good look at the um, close in at the video now the problem is is that this screen here is nowhere near enough resolution to check you've got a reasonable focus on there so you can use an external field monitor with that the only downside to it is is that it's only power NTSC out which is reasonably low resolution compared to uh, the 4k of course that you've got there however you can uh, reasonably focus with this um, if you have a, a field monitor such as something something like there's a field monitor here which I sometimes use so um, with that let's uh, move on and let's see what we can we can do with this. So, uh, what I had to do was to, I had to try to figure out how on earth this thing actually uh, was connected and how it worked, because of course there's no specifications to how they're using this USB-C uh, connector. And uh, so I had a little uh, look-see, and, and I got some connectors. So I've got some some breakouts for the USB-C plug, and I've also got some breakouts for the USB-C receptacle here and I used a combination of these to figure out what was going on and what was connected um, as well as uh, reverse engineering this as well so anyway what um, uh, one of the, the confusions of USB-C as opposed to the old USB standard is there's all sorts of extra bits and pieces in there and uh, not only that um, I should mention early on that the uh, receptacle pinout is slightly different to the plug pinout and uh, we'll see later on that uh, that's that is actually uh, caused a bit of a bit of a problem. So um, you'll also notice that um, the plug connector that I got, which was going to go straight into here, uh, the plug connector um, doesn't reflect all of the pins. Seemingly, that's oops. 
that's on here. So it is actually double sided. Uh, there's nine on one side and eight on the other. Um, what they've done is they combine things like uh, the grounds and the V-bus pins um, all into, well, the grounds actually go across two pins and then you've also got the V-bus pins are all combined into a single pin on here. So all in all you do end up with uh, with all the pinouts uh, coming out uh, but rather than you having to solder up 0.5 millimeter and because it's double sided you're probably almost certainly going to have to make yourself up a PCB to do this and um, this is just a one-off for me so didn't really want to do that so I used this breakout instead. So um, I had to figure out what was what. Now actually the, the video side of it was pretty easy because um, I uh, put a scope on the connectors and f uh, connector pins and I could find out that actually the video comes out on this pin, SBU1 and SBU2. You can, with it, if you've got an oscilloscope and uh, you've got a reasonable grounding on uh, 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 how this sort of, sort of video what, what to look for for a, for a power NTSC video signal it stands out like a sore thumb so that's pretty quick to find out the confusion came was when I was trying to figure out how to do the audio um, now the audio didn't seem to work as I expected and the reason was was that what I was doing was rather than plugging a plug straight into here and checking it out what I was doing was I'm going to find one now. Here it is. One I was using a, a male to male uh, USB C. This is actually a Thunderbolt one, which has other implications as well. But I used the standard USB C to USB C uh, a cable. And the problem with that was was that um, there's differences. Actually, there is. This does not reflect. You'd think that this would reflect exactly what's coming out of here on the end there. If I plug this in and had a receptacle to receptacle using a plug to plug, it doesn't work that way. So what you have to do is, uh, I discovered after a lot of messing about, was that you do have to have a plug on here. Now there is an option that you can do for this, and I better can't find it. Right? Oh, here we go. Is that what you can do is you can extend it by using a USB mail to USB female so that's the way to do it if you wanted to extend this out now let's show you what the the uh, device looks like that I've got which does all of this um, power and all this sort of business and this is it here now it's a bit of a mess but it needs must sometimes and to be honest with you if you use one of these to extend it um, rather than plugging this thing directly into the into here every time see how little extension you could put this into a little box and pops your uncle and you'll see on here that there's this three and a half millimeter connector for your microphone there is this is the um uh, video out on an rca connector and here is your uh usb connector the usb a connector that we all know and love now one thing to note here is that as i mentioned um, on this little thing is that we're only doing data at USB to high speed only. Now the reason for that is is that when you're prototyping on this kind of board, um, signal integrity is is pretty tough to be able to do at USB three high um, super speed and above. So to be honest with you, I wouldn't even bother. The interesting thing is actually is that there's not a huge amount of difference between running uh, this device at uh, USB three super speed and high speed from the point of view of grabbing data off of the internal uh, micro SD. So not not a big deal. If you want to use USB three um, super speed, of course you can do. Just use a proper cable. But trying to wire up uh, the USB 3 um, uh, pins, which are RX1 uh, pair here, TX1 pair here, RX2 pair here, and the TX2 pair here, to be honest with you, is going to be a little bit of hard work uh, because of the signal integrity problems um, at the speed that it's going. So uh, that's a bit about USB. Uh, the other thing is microphone. I discovered that it's actually mono only. I, or I couldn't get it to work in stereo, so I'm assuming that's the way it works. Um, and the video out is either Power or NTSC, and you, and you select that in one of the menus on here. Um, one thing I did mention, did see on the PAL, was that I think there may be a firmware issue with this. Um, 
on the timing and sometimes I had to restart the camera to make the video out work. Uh, the colours were wrong and it's almost as if the um, colour burst clock is running at the wrong speed for NTSC and uh, similarly PAL. So re basically switching the camera off and on seemed to fix that. Um, so maybe it's fixed in a later firmware version. I don't know, I haven't updated the, update the firmware for, uh, for a month or two. Okay, so uh, USB-C connector, some, some caveats to this before I just show you the, the pinouts and everything. Uh, there's a slight buzz on the microphone sometimes, I haven't quite got to the bottom of this. Uh, if you do get that, um, turn off the video out and that uh, kind of corrects for that. Although obviously sometimes you might want to use the microphone and see the video out, in which case readjusting the cables and where they go that might help. Uh, I'll do an update if I figure what the problem is, but uh, probably some sort of common mode signal problem or something like that anyway um, so the other thing is is that when you plug in your USB uh, connector into a PC it will switch directly into mass storage mode so that means that you can't power the camera in record mode um, while it's plugged into a PC but the uh, the way to figure that out is you just use a power bank so um, uh, something something like a power bank like this rather than plug it into your, your PC directly. That works fine so you can power it, uh, use the microphone, use the video out, Bob's your uncle, you've got as much recording time as you need. Uh, next bit is, is uh, I mentioned earlier on, uh, that you need to, you must use a plug, not a receptacle, when you're sort of um, wiring this thing up. This You have to have a plug here because of the thing I mentioned earlier on about using a male to male USB-C cable. It just doesn't work. Um, wasted a lot of time messing around with that, but also learned quite a bit about USB-C in the process. So you can use a, <coughs> a male to female extension cable, but make sure it supports what's called power delivery. So don't get a really cheap one. Um, they're not expensive anyway, but make sure you get one that supports power delivery. One little comment I'm going to make about that is that uh, just be aware that you could degrade some of the signals a little bit um, uh, going over a, a long uh, male to female extension. Okay, and the next bit is, which I found uh, uh, you must do is you really do need to use a, a, a shielded uh, microphone and video cables otherwise you will get this buzzing thing that I mentioned uh, will be interminable and so you must uh, use a, a shielded microphone. The problem I had was actually I uh, took apart a, a, a video cable um, I'm throwing it away now haven't I? Uh, here it is this is this is a video cable that I sort of took apart to use uh, for this. Um, it's kind of cheaper just to take one that you've got. Well, I thought it was cheaper anyway. Problem with this one is there's no shield. It's literally just a um, uh, white and a red uh, connector, and so this is unshielded in it. And the quality of the video was rubbish. And there's lots of hum on the microphone. So let's go on to the uh, connections. Now you, you know that I mentioned earlier on that uh, can't find them there. Here we go. That these uh, connectors here have got nine pins on one side and eight on the other. Well, this is the buzz out for them. So you can. Uh, this is the top, uh, or if you like the nine pin connector. So if you want to look at that, yeah, I've uh, buzzed them out, and uh, that's the uh, connections here. Uh, that I figured, so you've got a microphone here, uh, then you've also got the video out here, uh, which actually also comes out here as a matter of SBU1 and SBU2 seem to have video, whatever you do. There's a bit of confusion over the which microphone connection to use, um, and I'm still not sure. The USB-C spec talks about you needing to tie a 56K resistor from CC1 to VBUS uh, to, to be USB2 compatible. Um, so didn't seem to make any difference in this particular scenario. So let's have a little look see here. So here's the uh, pinouts here. So we've got here, um, I'll see if we can hang it both on here. So this is your three and a half millimeter. It's, actually, this is a receptacle. <sighs> receptacle. Same thing, to be honest with you. Um, I did it as a receptacle, we could as a plug and use a, um, an adapter. Uh, but the same thing, you've got T tip R ring S shield. So the tip goes to CC2 connection, uh, stroke VCON, which is here. The CC1 goes to uh, this A5 connection, and the, the shield goes to your, your grounds. Here we go. Um, I tied the, the, in fact, on the adapters that, uh, that I have. 
here the shield of the USB connector was connected to ground as well so that was all done for me and uh, then here we go video is nice and easy I just took SBU2 which was the B8 connection put it to the center of the RCA connector and then ground to the outer of course things just to note doing the USB connection part of it, remember this is only USB 2 high speed, pretty easy, just the V bus. So what I did is I took a, a cheapo old USB cable, I think it was a USB A to USB B mini, uh, you could use a micro just as well. And you'll find that in general there's, there's going to be four wires in there and a shield. And uh, the V bus goes to the red. Um, the D minus goes to the white, D plus goes to the green, and the ground goes to the black. And uh, there we go, and then off to the shield as well. Um, but just keep in mind, these are pretty high speed. They're 480 uh, megabit, so keep them short. I recommend less than a centimeter. Uh, bearing in mind that um, this is not what I would call controlled impedance. This is a bit of veriboard, strip board sort of thing, so um, yeah. Okay, and I'm sorry it's a little bit messy, uh, but that's because I've uh, got a few things wrong, and this is why I'm giving you the video to save you all that time for yourself. So, there we go. That is how to make a Yi 4K Plus adapter that provides uh, power and USB data, and it also provides a microphone input and a video out. Thanks very much for watching.